So human rights violation, uh, violation watch, watch group criticized uh, El Salvador's president for his crackdown on gang members. Okay. So let's watch this. Let's watch this video so you guys can understand what's going on uh, in El Salvador. And then we talk about it. All right. It looks like a sea of skin and tattoos. These images released by El Salvador's government shows the transfer of about 2,000 inmates stripped to their shorts and with their heads shaved to what's been dubbed the country's new mega prison. It just opened. It's believed to be the largest prison in the Americas with a capacity for 40,000 people and it's the latest step in a controversial crackdown on crime that's caused the country's prison population to soar. Human rights organizations have reported that innocent people have been caught up in the law enforcement campaign. That includes dozens, they say, who have died in police custody. Last year, the country's president asked Congress for emergency powers to temporarily suspend some constitutional rights after a massive spike in murders attributed to gang crime. It includes that arrests can be made without a warrant and detainees no longer have a right to a lawyer. Private communications of all citizens can also be accessed by the government. Since then, about 64,000 suspects have been arrested. The murder reports fell about 57% last year. Hace poco me comunicaban sobre la acción que quiere tomar la CIDH contra El Salvador por el combate a las pandillas. Y yo me pregunto qué hizo la CIDH en los últimos 30 años cuando las pandillas estaban masacrando a nuestro pueblo. ¿Por qué nunca se pronunciaron a favor del pueblo salvadoreño honrado? Pero parecería que ahora que estamos logrando defender los derechos humanos del pueblo salvadoreño honrado, defender los derechos humanos de las personas cuyos derechos no deben estar restringidos, entonces ahora se pronuncian, se pronuncian de que estamos violando los derechos humanos de ese pequeño ínfimo porcentaje de salvadoreños cuyos derechos deben estar restringidos para que los demás puedan tener sus derechos humanos no restringidos. Y cuando uno habla de derechos humanos restringidos, hay gente que dice, pero ¿y por qué? Si son humanos todos, claro, pero los seres humanos tienen derechos restringidos cuando han cometido una falta. Por ejemplo, un preso no tiene derecho a votar. Es derecho humano votar, sí, pero no si está preso. Es derecho humano estar libre, ir a donde uno quiere, pero no si está preso. En Estados Unidos, por ejemplo, hay pena de muerte. Es decir, tenemos derecho a la vida, pero no si tiene pena de muerte. Los que tienen pena de muerte no tienen derecho a la vida. Aquí en El Salvador no tenemos pena de muerte. De hecho, ni siquiera tenemos cadena perpetua. En El Salvador, pues no lo han vivido. No, ellos no entienden la necesidad de hacer estas cosas. Pero los salvadoreños sí lo entienden. Y por eso es que los salvadoreños aplauden estas medidas. Así se oponga la CIDH. Lo único que demuestra la CIDH es de qué lado están ellos. Si están del lado de la gente honrada o están del lado de los delincuentes. Y lo grave no es en El Salvador, porque nosotros vamos a hacer lo mejor para los salvadoreños, diga lo que diga la CIDH. Lo importante es el mensaje para los demás países de Latinoamérica. Ustedes van a ver en los próximos días si esta organización está del lado de ustedes o de los criminales. Si esta organización se pone del lado de los criminales en El Salvador, no duden que están del lado de los criminales en sus países también. Y lo que va a pasar entonces es que los gobiernos de sus países van a tener miedo de combatir la delincuencia para no ganarse sanciones de la CIDH. Y si algún gobierno osa desafiar a los protectores de los delincuentes y defender a la gente honrada, entonces lo van a sancionar también. Amid a wide re uh, reaching government crackdown on organized criminal groups in the country, almost 2% of El Salvador adult population has been detained and at least 18 people have died in police custody. According to a new report from the human rights group Amnesty International, The crackdown, uh, as initiated by President Nayib Bukele in March, is aimed 
a suspect member of MS-13, also known as Mara Salvatrucha and Barrio 18, both of which uh, are street gangs and emerged in El Salvador following waves of mass deportation of Salvadoran immigrants from the United States in the 1980s and 1990s. In addition to reports of arbitrary detentions, torture, and inhuman conditions in now overcrowded prisons, the government has also reportedly uh, targeted journalists, activists, and even corrupt judges, amounting to what Amnesty International is describing as massive human rights violations. According to Amnesty International's report, El Salvador its government has made arrests um, without administrative or judicial arrest warrants and uh, without catching defendants in the act of committing a crime. Rather, arrests are based on a defendant is prior criminal records or because uh, they live in a community with a large gang population. Many arrestees have been denied access to legal representation and are held for weeks before uh, seeing a judge. The U.S. government, uh, which has long played a role in El Salvador's organized crime problem, has remained relatively silent, uh, bearing one statement from Secretary of State Antony Blinken and one answer by Blinken to a question at a press conference in Panama City, in Panama, U.S. diplomatic institutions have largely responded with silence toward this report and neither statement did Blinken acknowledge um, how these gangs come to, to hold such a sway in Salvador is instead re uh, restating previous U.S. support of the Salvadorian government. We continue to support El Salvador in its effort to reduce the proliferation of gangs since 2008. We have invested $411 million to improve citizen security and to help the Salvadorian government combat gang violence, Blinken said in his statement. It's ironic because you could argue that 20 to 30 years later, the U.S. is now reaping the result of a very mistaken policy from the 1980s. It's a combination of heavy-handed U.S. intervention in support of El Salvador's right-wing military junta during the 1980s and uh, uh, U.S. deportation of Salvadorians to an economically impoverished country just out of the throes of civil war set the stage for the street gangs to explode in power, reach, and influence. The street gangs incorporated the violence and they have continued to build on it. In addition to waging paramilitary violence, Gangs like MS-13 and Barrio 18 become a refuge for many deported Salvadorians, especially those who return to the country after leaving for years in the United States. A 2017 World Bank study noted that 81% uh, of deportees were men and that many Salvadorians repatriated from the United States returned home poorer and with fewer resources to start over having drained their resources and social networks to make the initial journey north. They also face many new stigmas associated with their deportations. Gangs provide support and act as a substitute families. For these reasons, solutions to this problem need to address social exclusion and lack of opportunity as much or more as they do the law enforcement challenges pose by the gang in El Salvador. It remains one of the world's most dangerous countries and uh, taking on gangs has uh, remained a priority for Salvadorian governments since the end of the civil war. Previous government have balanced mano dura or heavy policy with secret negotiation with gangs leaders at the times uh, reportedly bribing gangs in exchange for reduced homicides, El Salvadoran news outlet El Faro has reported, Bukele's government, uh, the new president, was acting no differently before March 2022, trying to negotiate a similar truce to one of El Salvador's government and reach uh, with the gangs in the early 2010s. 
However, negotiation broke down after the government arrested a group of MS-13 members uh, who had been granted safe passage while they rode in a government-provided uh, vehicle driven by a government-contracted driver. And this perceived betrayal uh, prompted an unprecedented explosion in homicides in which 87 people were killed by gang members in three days. Hence, the latest crackdown. All right? Some believe that uh, the U.S. should use its soft power to hold the Salvadorian government accountable. Rhetorics from the U.S. government that seeks to um, enforce the importance of Salvadorian civil society and independent media should be accompanied by clear action that support these groups. Ana Maria Mendez Dardon, a human rights lawyer and uh, the Central American director at the Washington Office for Latin America wrote, Analysis, however, uh, others are skeptical that the U.S. can intervene effectively from a diplomatic or political perspective. The idea that the U.S. can go in and remedy this problem is a false assumption. That is a great deal of the problems, especially because people have negative perceptions of the U.S. in the region, following like uh, decades, you know, of military intervention. And this new Salvadorian president is doing a great job getting rid of gang. So I don't understand what's the issue here is with this human right violation. If these same gangs members violate their victims' human rights. Come on, Human Rights Watch. Y'all need to focus on the many human rights abuse that is happening here in the U.S. and other parts of the Europe. But I guess you don't talk much about human rights when the Western nations are involved in violating them. Be more fair and respectful to El Salvadorian government and let them take care of the cancer in their society. Every society deserves to have peace and gangs don't bring peace let the salvadorian president deal with them this is bob sankaria do not forget to subscribe click the like button and thanks for watching enjoy your day